Hey everybody, welcome back to the Serving Pleasure Podcast. I'm Ethan Jesse. And I'm Harry Yost. And this is the podcast where we talk about trashy romance novels. The best kind of novels. Oh, sorry, we've been gone for a really long time. A very long time. We just got super busy, but we're excited to hop on the Bone Rider. And also, this Bone Rider we just purchased so we <laughs> could read it for you today. Because it's been so long, our online library account automatically return the book for us <laughs> so i hope exotic erotic has been entertaining you in the meantime while they continue to lambast the original podcast that spawned them but kids will be kids kids will be kids <laughs> and i can't stop them so i'm gonna go back and read the short summary of bone rider because what i read before harry you're right was too short <laughs> because I read the extended summary, and there's some important stuff that I left out. First of all, I found this summary from the website of the publisher called Dream Spinner Press, which is where dreams come true. International publishers of quality gay romantic fiction since 2007. That's a good place to be. It is a good place to be. I wish I was that. Dreams coming true right now. All right, <laughs> then I'll hop, I'll hop in to the summary, which says, Riley Cooper is on the run. Misha Tokarev, the love of his life, turned out to be an assassin for the Russian mob, and when it comes to character flaws, Riley draws the line at premeditated murder. Alien armor system McLean is also on the run, for reasons that include accidentally crashing a spaceship into Earth and evading U.S. military custody. A failed prototype, McLean was scheduled for destruction, oh my God. sabotaging the ship that put an end to that. But McLean is dubbed a bone rider for good reason. He can't live without a host body. That's why he stows away in Riley's truck, and then Riley himself. Their reluctant partnership soon evolves into something much more powerful oh and God. personal than oh. either of them could have imagined. <laughs> Sipping a romance with oneself. <laughs> I'm not even done. There's more. Oh my god. Together, they embark on a road trip from hell, made all the more exciting by the government troops and mob enforcers hot on their trail. Misha is determined to win Riley back, and willing to do whatever it takes to keep him safe. When Hitman and Alien join forces, <laughs> they discover their impressive combined potential for death and destruction. It will take everything Riley has to steer them through the mess they create. And the all-important genres that we missed out on are science fiction and western. So... Bone Rider <laughs> has already exceeded my expectations just immensely. Like you said aliens in the last thing and I was like, Harry, don't spoil it for me. No, it was in the summary. I just didn't read all of it. I was kind of like, like skimming the summary and I just saw aliens and I... <laughs> You were like, no, Harry, this is a good enough summary. This is a good enough synopsis. And I, I was like, Ethan, just from what I've seen, I don't really know if we're hitting everything. I was so wrong. <laughs> also, the fact that the alien is called a bone rider. The alien is a bone rider named McLean. <laughs> I'm going to change my Twitter name again. Yes. <laughs> a bone rider named McLean. McLean. It's too long, but I'll make it fit. Bone rider McLean. <laughs> Um, this really reminds me, though, so Stephanie Meyer mm -hmm. wrote a book called The Host. Yeah. It's kind of, and this is what it reminds me of. This is kind of like the gay host. You gotta unlock your iPad. Yeah, I'll unlock that. I should probably turn that off. No, but go on. So that's what, like, reading it, I it's like, you know... Was The Host romantic? I thought it was supposed to be, like, a thriller. Oh, it's totally romantic. Not that I've read it, but I've seen the movie, and the movie has a really good-looking Max Irons, so All you right. best believe that's romantic. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yes. Do we have an About the Author page here? Because I'd like to read that if we do. Oh, do we? I don't know. I don't Looking know. Let me... It. If we don't have that, then you can go ahead and just read the acknowledgement section. Where okay. Are you right now? Why is it taking so long to get back in? I'm just... Me. I right. was doing me. I don't think we have one. I don't know if we do, but I well, really... Well, it could be at the end. Yeah, I don't want to flip through the whole thing. I don't know. It's either. on Kindle. It would take us forever. Yes. We're dawdling too long. We're going to cut yeah, all we of are. this out. Oh my God. Harry? No, no, okay. All right. So here we go. Harry's going to read the acknowledgement section of this book, and then we're going to hop right into the prologue. So in this episode, we're going to have the prologue in the first chapter. 
which I'm not stealing from Exotic Erotic. I just don't want to waste too much time. Right on. All right. So this is for Little Dragon. This is for you. You make me proud. You help me fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Little Dragon. I don't want to be mean to Jay Faley. That probably means a lot to them. It probably does, but it's just so it's... wonderfully random. Who's Little Dragon? Little Dragon. That's the real mystery of Bone Rider. You know, my Little Dragon is Kevin <laughs> the cat. He ruins the podcast every episode. Every episode. Are we just going to hop into it? Let's just hop in. All right, let's go. Bone Rider. Prologue. The fuckers were going to kill him. He knew it. He'd known since the results had come in and he'd compared his top performances to those of his brothers. Not good enough. Not dedicated enough. Well, they had him there. Honestly, there were pieces of his partner he wouldn't have touched with a ten-foot pole, much less his own private parts. What? We're starting off strong. Yeah, it is. Which, since, as an intelligent battle armor and weapon system, he was supposed to bond completely with his host. <laughs> Wait, he was supposed to bond completely with his host might be construed as a flawed. Maybe. Possibly. I definitely did not realize we were starting with Bone Rider McLean. Bone Rider, no. Bone Rider McLean is apparently the main character, oh. which is stupid considering he's not the first mentioned character in the song. No, that's why I was like, what the hell is happening? Oh, now I understand. It's okay. It's McLean. It's McLean. He studied the charts again. The results didn't get any better from staring at them, though. And his worry ratcheted up another notch. Damn it. He should have bitten the bullet and completed the bonding, allowed himself to sync with his host's personality as well as his body. Trouble was, as it turned out, he not only had considerable intimacy issues, there was also a lot of him and not quite enough of his host. <laughs> he's very picky. He's, a, he's super picky. He's a very picky technological armor system. He's got standards, he's right? Got... If you don't live up to those standards, I don't want to date you. I don't want anything to do with you. But he was he designed? It's uh, I, You know, this alien culture will delve into it. We will hopefully... Delve into so it. we're gonna tread on some exotic erotic territory, and they're just gonna have to deal with it. Sorry, not I didn't. Sorry. I'm sorry, not sorry. We said we were gonna do Bone Rider. Boom, we're doing it. The result was that he was neither willing to mesh with his host's mind, nor able to perfectly settle under his skin. Six experimental armors, six unique artificial beings, and of course, one of them had to be too big, too slow, had to have too much sense of self. There was always one. In this particular case, it happened to be System Six. The last one out of the lab. God damn you, System 6. Cut, get your shit together. Come on. Too independent. <laughs> the one intended for the most highly decorated host. The war hero turned voluntary test subject. Rick, spelled R-I-K. Badass. He of the yucky innards and the slimy subconscious. I honestly have no idea what you're reading. <laughs> you know, I don't either, but I'm just doing it as confidently as possible. I love it. It sounds great. Just like Mama taught me. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. System 6 had been eager to join with his host as the other systems, but that had been before he'd been poured down Rick's throat and discovered something he did not... discovered he did not want to spend his life tied to someone who didn't fit him in size and personality. He wanted out. Oh, did he want out. <laughs> yep. You want it out, everyone. Punctuate it hard, Jay. <laughs> Punctuate that real hard. Mm, I love it. Too bad that out translated to Killed. Oh my god. Destroyed by his creators, or his own traitorous body. Battle armors were symbiotic by design. They couldn't survive on their own. It was why they'd been dubbed Bone Riders by their designers. Mm -hmm. Lab humor. He hated it. <laughs> 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 he hates the title of this book. He does. Fact remained that without bones, or rather a host body to ride, System 6 would shut down bit by bit and eventually disintegrate. Hence, the faking. Oh, I read, I read that as farting from the side, and I was like, whoa. Anyway. Extremely high, but if you compare them to other units, the scores are substandard. You try to run with the pack, with your legs hobbled, System 6 thought resentfully, shoving his stolen copy of the report's charts back into place. He inched closer to the doorway, keeping his host's body pressed against the wall and unaware of the goings-on around him. As far as Rick was concerned, they were in their bunk, sleeping. Rick was probably dreaming about fornication again. Oh, Rick, you dirty bird. Rick, get it together. <laughs> you are a soldier. You don't have time to think about such things as fornification. Forni Forn fortification. Fortification by fornication. <laughs> 
Yeah. System 6 was too busy eavesdropping on their commanding officers to check, and, frankly, too disgusted. Slimy, scummy, gross subconscious. Gah! Keep sleeping, Rick. Not your life they're discussing. Can be they simply need more time to adjust. That was Mir, second in command of the Widowmaker and System 6's new favorite person. Yes, more time would be good. Maybe he could bring himself to bond with Rick after all, give it more time. Or figure out a way to jump hosts without getting himself killed. If it turned out they were really as incompatible as System 6 suspected, there had to be a way to make this work. He didn't want to die, be dismantled, didn't matter what they called it. The result was the same. No more System 6. He didn't understand how the other systems could be so calm about the threat of extermination. But then, they were hooked in completely. What little consciousness they had dissolved in their hosts, safe in oblivion, happy in absolute amalgamation. Sheeple. That was me, not the book. Oh. <laughs> Harry, you're not even reading. I'm just so invested in your voice and what's happening to System 6. <laughs> all right, all right. Not that they'd started out with a lot of individuality. Honestly, sometimes System 6 couldn't help but wonder if maybe he was the only one who was truly sentient. No. Look at the readings. The fucking armor is too big. Way too big. The idea was to use the extra material for plating under heavy fire, but that can't work. Too much matter and not enough room, see? There was a short pause while the officers stared at whatever Com had pointed out. In the long run, it's going to squash Rick's organs and kill him. System 6 didn't bother poking Rick's head around the corner to check which part of the test protocols was being pointed out. He didn't like where this conversation was going. His performance hadn't been all that great back at base, but the discrepancy between him and the others had been attributed to the general differences between the systems. This had been their first long-distance training. The crunch test. Crunch! <laughs> Obviously, he'd failed. Worse, they'd noticed space issues. We'd, they'd noticed the space issues. I thought that just said space issues. Like, oh. Generic problems in space. Things are happening. It's big. <laughs> There's hoping, fighting. I was really hoping that Jay Fally was just like, oh, fuck, what, what problems could happen in space? Uh, uh, just write space, space issues. Space issues. Space issues. I'll get back to it. No, I won't. No. Ah, ah. I highlighted it, but I just sent it into the publisher. Everyone understands. <laughs> This was so, so bad. They were going to kill him. Pull him out like a bad tooth and kill him. Oh my god. The others were doing fine, though, Mer noted, perusing the results. Much better than any kind of external body armor we've tested. I'm thinking Lur was right. Smart systems are the way to go. They are mm. impressive, Com admitted a little grudgingly. He was an old-school military and had never made a secret out of the fact that he didn't much like the idea of soldiers invaded and joined with intelligent weapons. Too much potential for disaster, he'd argued on the way to the, out to the training grounds. You don't fuck with individuals like that. No, you don't! Individuality! You know, duality. My favorite. The duality of man-aliens. <laughs> Bar but body armor? I don't know. It's weird going. that they keep calling it body armor. Right, because I'm like, are you an alien or are you something that was intentionally It sounds like a made? soup that's being poured down yeah, someone's throat. Yeah, it does, because it was poured down Rick's throat, and you could just see Sister Six and be like, no, no. I'm going to ride your bones. It's not the way I want it, but it probably no. will. <laughs> System Six agreed with him, though the perspective differed somewhat. Mayor chuckled. Five out of six is pretty impressive, too. <laughs> meaning one of them was going to be destroyed when they were back on base, and System 6 had no doubts as to which one of them was going to end up so much scrap, end up as so much scrap metal. His host's heart rate spiked in reaction to his agitation. Rick's mind stirred, but System 6 slapped it down before it could struggle to full awareness. No! Fuck you, Bad Rick! Rick. Fuck you, Rick! You stay down! Bad Rick! <laughs> Go sleep, Rick! Sleep, Rick, sleep. <laughs> The last thing System 6 needed was his creep of a host interfering with what he had to do. There was no way he was going to let them ship him back and hold still while they tore him from this body and pulled him apart. They created him. That didn't, that didn't give them the right to undo him. Time. He needed time. They were traveling through space at high speed. Light speed? Whoa! Yeah. Much too fast for System 6 to come up with a feasible plan before they reached their destination. Okay, I'm sorry, so then... Okay, just finish this. <laughs> finish the prologue. What he needed was a break. He had to stop the damn ship, or at least slow them down some. 
All right. Engine room. Find the control station. Get into the system. Hack the override and hit the brakes. How hard could it be? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so he was... He's, Thoughts uh, on the prologue? No, I'm go for so it. I'm so confused. So, System 6 mm. is an alien that was designed by aliens to sit in other alien bodies. Yeah. So this entire time, I couldn't figure out if, like, they were saying alien, like, he's an invasive species, kind of, like, he's like an alien foreign, kind, not invasive species, he's like a foreign thing. <laughs> and then I was like, well, no, maybe they do mean space. But now the way they're talking about it, maybe it's just, like, a weird dystopian land in which earth creatures, a.k.a. No, humans. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, like, alien aliens, <laughs> like, from another planet. But then they design, like, System 6 and the other five systems are, like, like nano machine type AI that okay. bond on to bones, but I have a big problem with that because why would you make them sentient? Why? Yeah. Well, it sounds like the other five aren't. were sentient. Are are aren't? Because it sounds like they're not. Oh shit! Because <laughs> why did this turn into a sci-fi podcast? Oh, this is so so because it sounded like the other five. Oh, maybe they weren't. Maybe it was like we're weak. The people we also invaded. Or we're put in are weak, and now we're one because our weaknesses combine to be <laughs> to make something us strong. strong. I don't know. You know, maybe it's possible that System Six is special, and that he's the only like he's one of those rare cases of AI that like gain human like yeah. sentience or like not human like because they're not human. They're a this is hard for me. It's like her. It's like her. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it too, actually. And Rick is Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> Rick is... Oh. We'll probably never see him again. We probably but never Rick, will. But Rick is Joaquin Phoenix. All right, Harry, do you want to take chapter one? Sure. You know what? How about you play You play our hero, <laughs> and I'll play System 6. I'll be honored because, to play the all hero. All right, all right, all right. All right. <clears throat> do we have any thoughts of how this is going to go before we hit chapter one, or are we just going to do it? <coughs> I feel like chapter one's going to start with our hero being like, Misha, why are you the mob? <laughs> Misha Tokarev, don't be in the mob. And then he shot three times in the chest and left for dead. Oh, I would love that. And then that. System 6 <laughs> crawls into his body, and then they bond in the middle yeah, of the desert. Yeah, he was like, bullet, ooh, ooh, bullet wounds? Bullet wounds. And he's like, <laughs> sexy. So sexy. I love it. I love it. Oh. All right, let's hit it. It was supposed to be a routine training Harry, exercise. You forgot to say Bone Rider Chapter 1. Bone Rider <laughs> Chapter 1. It was supposed to be a routine training exercise, a missile test in a fenced-in, rarely used area of military property west of San Antonio. Heat, brush, and the occasional run-in with a disgruntled rattler. Sweating rookie soldiers testing new types of ammunition and camouflage. Sweaty officers dutifully jotting down the results. Nothing fancy or unusual, except maybe the abnormally high percentage of FNGs. There's a footnote on this! There's a footnote! What Wait. is an FNG? Please, tell me. Fucking new guy! <laughs> Fucking new guy! Oh, sh shit! Shit! Now how do you shit. get back? Shit, Dream Spinner Press. Wait, what if you press that footnote again? Okay, okay. So, percentage of... Everyone keep in mind, FNG. FNG. Fucking, Fucking new, new guy! guy. But so far, nobody had been hit by friendly fire. So Captain Mark Brennan, in command of the exercise, figured they were doing all right. <laughs> oh, we're okay. Yeah, no, but nobody oh. shot anybody yet. It's a good day. You didn't blow off a limb. Better cool. than the day I lost my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly it was business as usual, right until the bright blue Texas sky turned red above their heads as a glowing, burning missile came screaming from the heavens and pulverized it. Not even five clicks from base camp. <laughs> the force of the impact made the ground shake. <laughs> Brennan lost his footing and ended up flat on his face, as owies. did most of his men. They're all just going owies. They're, this hurts. Everything hurts. <laughs> Equipment tumbled. An expensive new radar system no. got smashed to bits by a crate that bounced like a damn rubber ball. Mm. And the newly erected tents collapsed with the clink of toppling metal poles and the sigh of slumping fabric. <laughs> <laughs> this is so oh. like, oh, I'm tired, guys. Yeah, thanks for providing visuals on, like, the Duchess of Love. Right. Things are here. Things. Look at them. <laughs> I can't see them. It's Sally, crazy. make them. Some of the soldiers yelled in surprise, at least one of them in pain. Wow! Oh! 
Brandon shook his head to clear it a little and spat out a wad of dirt and blood. He must have bitten his lip when he'd hit the ground, but his teeth were all accounted for. Oh, so he merely wiped the back of his hand across his mouth and got back up with a grunt. <clears throat> his men were swaggering to their feet staggering around Staggering to their feet. Staggering. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> like, they're like, Gonna get what? back up. I didn't fall. I did a bit, but it's okay. Style my way back up, man. It's no problem. <laughs> Pop my collar. Good to go. <laughs> Staggering up around him, looking dazed and just as wobbly as their commanding officer. Some of them were talking, or maybe shouting, but he couldn't hear them over the din in his head, the roar of his own heartbeat, the ringing in his ears. It's tinnitus. He could only see their lips move. Bop, 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 bop. Wait, I just realized that doesn't work for this podcast. I really, it's a visual thing. It is. I also like. I also really like the idea though of this like turning into like this weird like David Lynch kind of psychedelic. He only sees their lips move, and then he like imagines like they're on like in this weird. Never mind. No, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but I think it'd be interesting. I'm gonna make this into a movie where that happens. Oh, can I play all the characters? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. I want to crawl into my own mouth. <laughs> And I ride want my. You. I want to ride my own bones. <laughs> you bone rider. I'm you. Uh, Ethan Jesse, bone rider of his own bones. I don't even want your name to be on it. I just want you to be known as Bone Rider. Bone. Like your acting. <laughs> my acting name is now no, bone, bone Rider. I will refer to you as nothing else but Bone Rider. <laughs> Next episode, watch out for it. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Serving Pleasure Podcast. I'm Bone Rider, and I'm here. You. <laughs> and this is Bone Rider. <laughs> and this is. Bo- we should just turn it to where we just read Bone Rider in different languages. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, bo- the, the, the bones. I should actually know how to say it. I don't, I know, don't how know how to say it in Spanish. I don't know how to say it in French. Brennan's vision was wonky as well, choppy and grainy, overlaid by the persistent flares and black spots caused by looking into too much brightness. He hoped his eyes hadn't been damaged, or maybe his brain, because he could have sworn he'd spotted a glimpse of red-hot red hot metal. metal a second before this flaming something, something that had fallen from the sky met the ground. It had looked like a big, blazing shape Sexy. that had defied the laws of physics by spinning along its lateral axis and Not slowing down before a touchdown. Touchdown! What? Touchdown! Please crash. He was reasonably sure that wasn't a meteorite was supposed to look or behave. And it's, I like the meteorite having like some sass. Like, I'm going to crash into you. I'm going to act like how I want. <laughs> meteorite. Uh-huh. Meteorite. It's just <laughs> Sassy meteorite. It's just Space Dwayne. It's just Space Dwayne. Like, <laughs> it's Space Dwayne. <laughs> okay, so Bone Rider, I will cast you as all the characters. And, and Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Johnson is the meteorite. That's a sassy meteorite. We'll paint him green. <laughs> And as soon as his ears stopped ringing and he could see again without miniature suns obscuring his vision, Brennan was going to call this shit in and ask permission to check out the site. He started toward the radio station, weaving a bit on unsteady legs. His equilibrium was shot to hell, but the high-pitched whistling in his ears had already climbed down several decibels. And he picked his way through the broken equipment slowly, blinking impatiently and checking on his men as he went. <sighs> what a mess. <laughs> Either some soon-to-be-discharged asshole had forgotten to relay information about missile tests in the area, he thought, or they were dealing with a U-X-O, U-X-O. as in unexploded ordnance. I like how that doesn't have a fit footnote, but... <laughs> I looked at the other footnotes, and most of them are just different shortenings of swear words. Oh, I'm so excited. Brennan hoped it was the former, because if it wasn't, then someone somewhere... Terrorists? Terrorists? North Korea? Korea? Iran? Iran? (laughs) Plenty of enemies to pick from. It could have been anybody. Had just declared war on the United States. Well, congratulations, Harry. We're now very extreme nationalists. I hope you're proud. If you weren't to to be an American, American, or at least I know I'm free from an alien alien invasion. invasion. They had invaded me, me and I'm proud to bone <laughs> right next to you <laughs> and inside your bones. <laughs> and there ain't no doubt I love my bones. <laughs> Cause, Cause I'm, I'm a, a bone, bone rider. rider. The thing was <laughs> that missiles rarely traveled alone. This one might have been a dud. 
But if it had been part of an attack, then there must have been others, better aimed and fully active. Maybe this had been meant for House Houston. Not Houston. <laughs> Houston. Houston. In other names, Houston. Though, House, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> I'm only going to call it Houston. Though that meant it must have gone completely off course. How many cities have been targeted? How many destroyed? What, what about, about Washington, Washington D.C.? Was it even still standing? Had the president been there? Brennan thought he should know, but he didn't. Off balance in every sense of the word as he was, so he shook it off and focused on the situation at hand. First things first. Secure the camp and contact command. Speculation was useless, useless. at this point. Brennan stopped by a hunched over <laughs> private to make sure the man wasn't seriously injured. No blood, though. Just miserable heaving in the early stages of an impressive <laughs> of an impressive goose egg. Is he laying one? He's just pooping. He's just pooping. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's impressive, kid. Keep going. <laughs> Push I wonder it. how much it weighs. Push <laughs> it! Faster! Harder! <laughs> Slicker. It's a, it's a bruise. Yeah. I know it's a bruise. Oh, I thought he was like, oh, maybe. The kid was probably concussed. He called for the medics, one hand on the soldier's back to make sure he didn't topple over, and glanced around, assessing the damage now that his sight was almost back to normal. It wasn't as bad as I had looked at first glance. The jeeps were still standing, as were the heavy weapons and ammo crates. The tents had toppled and equipment was strewn about, but the actual destruction looked to be minimal. He still wasn't hearing right, but his eyesight was mostly back to par, and he felt steadier on his feet. Barking bark, bark, orders bark. came naturally. He handed over the still wretching private into the medic's care and started to sort out the confusion around him. By his estimate, he could move his troops without the hour. Within the hour. He could do it within the hour. He needs that hour. He can't do it without it. <laughs> within the hour. Faster if necessary. Harris! He bellowed. <laughs> signaling the burly sergeant who'd, sergeant who'd been serving under him for a few years. Too many rookies around. He needed someone he knew was competent. Sit rep in 10! <laughs> Harris called back an affirmative and got going. He'd have a preliminary status report ready by the time Brennan had called in this S-N-A-F-U. Snafu. It means something normal all fucked up. Should we see what this means? It means something normal all fucked up. You can click the footnote. Does it really? Yeah. Situation, Situation normal, normal all fucked, all fucked up. up. This snafu. Thanks, Dad. You told me the wrong one. Oh, my God. I just read it. I was like, what? Oh, snafu. And then you said, makes sense. <clears throat> now, where the hell in this mess had the radio ended up? Brennan scanned his surroundings again, pausing for a moment to squint at the column of dark smoke that had risen in the western sky over the crash site like an exclamation mark. Huh. Missiles usually didn't burn up. UXOs didn't employ brake me mechanisms. Missiles, in general, didn't usually have brake mechanisms. That was a weird italic, but whatever. Yeah, it was. They were supposed to hit their targets at high velocity to add more oomph to their boom. Oomph to their boom. <laughs> oh, I want oomph to the boom. Oomph to the boom. <laughs> wicka wicka word. So a missile, especially a defective one, slowing down before impact didn't make sense. It might spin out of control, possibly flip around, especially when the targeting system was screwed up. But brake? No, no way. way. Manned aircrafts, on the other hand, that was a whole different ball game. Like cricket. Or baseball. Those are the only ones. That's the only ball game I know. Could have been one of those top secret jets coming down. Only had been too big for a plane. A shuttle, maybe? They wouldn't know for sure until they got into the crash site and done some rag recon. Recon. Some recon, not reckon. Don't puke on the table. Well, <laughs> word vomit. Some recon. But first, Brennan wanted to know for sure the rest of the world was still standing. The combat net radio had been dug out of one of the collapsed tents and set up well away from the heavier pieces of equipment. Since the earth tremor had been caused by a shock wave and not an earthquake, Brennan thought this was probably unnecessary. But he wasn't about to reprimand his man for erring on the side of caution. Especially not given the circumstances. He nodded at Sergeant Sergeant Why can't I say Sergeant? He nodded at Sergeant Mosley, who'd been bent over the radio, but looked up when Brennan's shadow fell over him. Base on the line for you, sir. Mosley barked. He didn't have to put much effort into it. The man was so used to relaying orders through static and lousy reception that his voice easily penetrated the cottony barrier between Brennan's brain and his surroundings. Readability is five by five. Roger that, said, said the, the half-deaf half captain. captain. 
Brennan thought ruefully. Nothing to be done about it. He sat down in front of the radio and got to work. Ten minutes later, they'd established that at least the Texas incident had been part of a had not been part of a bigger attack. This was good news as far as Brennan was concerned. I'd say so. I would say so too. I'd be like, well, oh, okay. Washington DC is still standing. That's all that he really cared about. So. <laughs> he only cares about Washington, D.C. He D. only C. cares about the president. He's not even from there. No, he's Protect not. Protect the president. Protect. I ship Brennan with the president, whoever that might be at the current juncture. I'm going to write a fanfic about Brennan and the president. July. Shh. <laughs> Shh. It's don't, a secret. Don't give away our plans. Don't give away our plans. Don't give away our plans, Bone Rider. The bad news was that whatever had crashed almost on top of them was definitely not of U.S. origin. Ben Brendan's description of the glimpse he caught on a huge metal object spinning in the air and slowing down before impact had been met with a terse wait out and a break that had lasted for several minutes before Bates had called back with the information that a special recon team was about to be deployed from Fort Mabry. Mabry. Since Brendan and his men were already on location, they were ordered to move in and assess the situation. Very fucking carefully was implied. Seen as most of the troops currently under Brennan's command were inexperienced, and Brennan himself had never actually seen combat. Sergeant Harris, who'd been waiting patiently at a respectful distance, took the news with equanimity. I don't know. The <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't taken an English class in years. Equanimity Same. is how I would say it. Equanimity. The men were mostly fine, he reported. One of the engineers who'd been working on a Jeep's engine had broken his arm when the hood had come down. Two privates had suffered minor concussions, and Private Rolston, with his usual luck and grace, had managed to get tossed into a prickly pear patch. Owie! What an alliteration. Prickly pear patch. That was it on the injury front. Most of the equipment had made it through in one piece, too, so they were good to go. Britain's platoon was as eager to check out the wreckage as their captain, and the men were all ready to roll in record time. Rolling, 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 rolling. UFO, you, UFO strolling? They don't know that yet. They left their wounded and a skeleton crew at... Skeleton, eh? Hey! <laughs> skeleton crew at base camp. I like to think it's just a bunch of skeletons that they set up to look like <laughs> people, so from afar you're like, oh, can't go there. <laughs> I lost my... At base camp! And went out in the jeeps, taking the direct route to the crash site. Brennan's hearing was better than before, but he knew none of them were back to 100% yet. So not only, I thought he meant all of his hearing, like none of them, and I'm like, how many hearings does he have? have? Then I'm like, oh, you probably need your soul. At me. least three of my five hearings have been injured. <laughs> Slowly but surely, though, I'm getting them all back. <laughs> so not only was he moving into a possibly hostile environment with rookie troops, he was also doing it while they were all deaf to some degree. At least it was only a recon mission, but it was still not his idea of a good time. <laughs> the closer they got to their destination, the tenser they all became. The air smelled burnt, pervaded with the dusty scent of overheated soil and the unexpectedly aromatic fragrance of charred vegetation. That's good writing. It was good. I like that. <laughs> I got a compliment. That I'm was good. I I'm happy I bought this one. <laughs> you can reread it. I'm good. It was hard to tell how much of the eerie silence was due to the shock of the impact as opposed to their collective hearing impairment, but Brennan didn't spot a single animal anywhere, not even from the corner of his eye. The bulk of what had once been a rounded hill covered in brush and summer yellowed grass must have been pounded flat, driven into the ground and compressed into geolo geologists' delight. Compressed into a geologist's delight. delight. Oh my god. But more than enough... <laughs> Material was still there, shoved aside with the blast wave. The men were forced to abandon their vehicles and My continue bike. on foot once they reached those wrinkled ridges of the crater. The four-wheel drive, no match for the mess of rocks and overturned earth before them. They fanned out in three squads to cover bigger area. And Brennan let his units... Are you gonna throw up? <laughs> <laughs> I keep having to like, cough and swallow. <clears throat> Squads to cover a bigger area, and Brennan led his unit straight up the slope and to the rim. The stones were still warm under their feet. They crawled the last few feet on their bellies, careful not to present a target when peeking over the edge. Brennan felt his stomach cramp a little with anticipation. he never done anything like this, quite like this. Checking out crash sites wasn't included in his usual duties, but this wasn't a textbook situation by any means. It made him tense with nerves and an adrenaline-fueled sense of excitement. He was intensely curious about what they were going to find down there. A shuttle? A drone? 
some sort of new stealth plane? Turned out it was something completely different in every sense of the word. Apparently, aliens did indeed have big, creepy eyes around the smaller side. They, they compensated the with big guns! Brennan stared, paralyzed, as his brain tried to work through a number of realizations such as... No! Those were people down there, even though they looked humanoid. And yes, he was sober and awake. And damn, damn if the UFOologists got so much as a whiff of this, they, they would, would cream, cream their, their geeky, geeky pants. pants. I know I am. I'm creaming all over <laughs> right now, Bone Rider. There's a big old cream of wheat can down there. <laughs> in the can. Just the can. Well, here, I'll show it to you. Oh, great, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Ethan. You got a can opener? Shoot. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he counted eight aliens huddled next to the, God help him, they that really was a spaceship. They looked tiny next to the immense metal structure, their skin milky white. Like mine. Their knees bent the wrong way. Like mine. Like a dog's hind legs. Like mine. Ethan, you are a bone rider. You've been this entire time. <gasps> my dream come true. Oh my God, what we were just joking about is reality. They were dressed as something that reminded Brennan a bit of black battle battle dress. A bit of black battle dress. Uniforms. That's hard to read. We should do vocal warm-ups. We should. <laughs> Looked like only four of them had made it out of the crash virtually unscathed. Three were down on the ground, one writhing in pain, one holding on to an imp imp in improvised tourniquet that kept it from bleeding out through the stump of its leg, one looking dead from the distance. What color do you think they bleed? Red. Okay. I'm not very creative. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> the alien providing first aid didn't look too hot either. I want to bone that alien. <laughs> not hot oh, enough. I need to bone all the aliens. <laughs> I have standards. Hold me back. <laughs> hold me back, it's Harris. Like, hold me back. Harris! <laughs> Harris, hold me back! <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I'm in love. <laughs> I'm lusty. I'm lusty. I'm a lusty captain. <laughs> <laughs> no telling if there were more of them still trapped or dead inside the wreck, which looked pretty mangled. It was a fairly big ship, though. Seemed like there'd be additional crew somewhere. Brennan took all of this in with a glance. Wow, he's very perceptive. Super fast. <laughs> more interested in the four aliens standing guard. They didn't look that different from their wounded companions, except that they were upright and alert, holding what had to be weapons and scanning the crater rim with glossy silver eyes. Sentries. The aliens were soldiers, Brennan thought, like recognizing like. Soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> like recognizing like. like. I read it as like. Like recognizing like. like. <laughs> or like recognizing like. I like you, aliens, but I'm really afraid to approach I like you. like these aliens. <laughs> I like like you. I, had, I handed them a check uh, box saying, do you like me or like like me? They crumpled it up and threw it at my face. <laughs> and then as they were throwing it, they shot him with their alien guns. They exploded. Big alien guns. The bigger the better. Big alien dicks. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. Soldiers gone down in unknown but presumably hostile territory, and his heart started to hammer crazily at the realization. He didn't know what gave him and his men away, but suddenly the sentry aliens spun and focused on them. Weapons coming up in what was probably reflex. Somebody in one of the other squads must have spooked by the action. Or the existence of or the, aliens. Or the existence of aliens. Badly enough to trigger a similar kind of impulse. They squeezed off a shot. Before Brennan could snap out an order to stand down, the aliens returned fire. Things went to hell in a handbasket after that. End of chapter one. That's cool. No, no, no. Hold on. We we can do. Do you want to do a post chapter discussion? Yeah, let's do a post chapter. Because if, if we're not gonna do like a thing, we might as well do. We might as well do it. I'm in. I'm, I'm invested. Super invested. <laughs> uh, the writing is pretty good. Yeah, all things considered, like even if this is like not great romance. Well, we're looking at it, hoping that it's bad romance. Yes. But it's pretty solid sci-fi writing overall. It totally is. And the other thing is too, like it's it's chapter one, right? We the that, romance, you know. It's, it can wait. It can wait. It's been alluded to, kind of, in the prologue, at the very least, right? Well, definitely the synopsis. We know that there's gonna be. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. 
Crawl in that mouth. Mm. <laughs> crawl in that mouth, boy. Slower. System six. System, Slower. crawl. Slower. <laughs> I need to see it. Slower. <laughs> System six. System six, I need to watch you crawl into my mouth. <laughs> Wait, don't stop where you are. I I'm, need to video. I'm actually kind of curious as to see what happens to Brennan, which is not something that I did for any of the characters in the last book. I know. And I'm super... Curious, so Brendan is the one, I already forgot the synopsis. Why it's not they, the main character. The main character hasn't even come up yet, I don't no, think. No, because it's a Riley, isn't it? That's yeah, the Riley character? something is the main character, and he hasn't even shown up. So, Bone Rider is being like, hey, you know what? This is an entire universe, and I want you all to be invested. That's super weird. I did not expect any of this to happen right I now. Sorry I for the limited amount of, like, lewd bits in Chapter 1, but, like, I don't know. But you're welcome you're, for some well-written chapter one. Yeah, and you better like it, because compared to the last thing we just read, this is better, <laughs> objectively so. This has a 4.5 out of 5 on Goodreads. Yeah, right? Damn! That's a good book. <laughs> I'm happy that I bought this one. That's going to be my, like, hopefully it continues like this, because that's going to be, like, my sentiment throughout the entire time. Like, damn! I'm happy I shelled out the 538. Damn, this is a good book. This is a good book for me. Uh -oh. I love it. <laughs> you never plugged in your laptop. I never oh, did. Oh, hurry, hurry, I'm, hurry. I'm, I'm running. But yes. And <laughs> Bone Rider. Solid so far. Solid. I'm excited to see where it goes. Oh, I'm so excited to meet Misha. We All need right. to practice our Russian Misha. accents. Because I want him to be a Misha. <laughs> All right. I loved you, and right. then I joined the mob. That's such a bad Russian accent. Yep, but guess what? Now you're playing Misha. I will happily pay Da. Me. Da! <laughs> I'm Misha. I like to... I like All right, everybody. Thanks for listening in. <laughs> I hope it was worth the wait. We'll be back soon with more. Stay tuned, please.